Now I will talk about the other approach to predict the flux distributions of uh, perturbed cells, which is room regulatory on-off minimization. So let's get back to this example network from the room publication. This is the idea behind room. Room says that yes, knockout organism will try to minimize its distance or it will try to minimize its deviation from the white type flux distribution. But room does not represent this as an Euclidean distance problem. Instead, room approach says that the perturbed organism, the knockout organism, will try to minimize number of changed reactions. It will try to minimize number of changed reactions. What does it mean? So the rate of this reaction was 10. The organism will try to keep it the same because changing it means readjusting enzyme levels, right? So in the Euclidean distance minimization, each rate slightly change. So room says that still making the rate from 10 to 8.8 .8 is a burden for the cell. So cell will try to keep the fluxes exactly the same as the wild type flux distribution. So this rate was five, for example. It will, so the cell will try to keep it five again. So this was zero. The cell will try to keep it zero again. But this one here, you know, it cannot go here anymore because the flux is blocked. So the flux will go here. So rather than zero, it will be five. And since five is here, so there's D production in order to go to E, this will also be five. It was zero and this is five. So in total, if you check those two flux distributions, number of chain reactions is just two in room example, right? The flux of this reaction changed and the flux of this reaction changed. This has already changed due to knockout. So let's skip it. But all the other rates are exactly the same as wild type. On the other hand, in the MoMA solution, this flux changed, this flux changed, this flux changed, this flux changed, maybe a little bit compared to the uh, wild type. It was five, it is three now. It was zero, it is 1.3 now. But all the fluxes changed. So room says that this is uh, indeed a burden for the cell. I mean, this, the re in reality, cell wouldn't want to do this. Uh, rather, maybe in this case, there is a much more pronounced changed in the flux of this reaction. It was zero, it is five now. It was inactive, it was active now. It was zero, it is five now. Maybe the change, magnitude of change is high, but still the cell is changing just one enzyme here. Here, one other enzyme. And all the other enzymes are working as they were working in the Y type case. So, uh, room paper, room approach says that because of this uh, difference in the objective function to mimic minimum deviation from the wild type uh, phenotype, 
room is better, they say. And they have published this in a very good journal, PNAS. Now I will show you their results in comparison to MoMA predictions. But let me first summarize what I have said. It is the same uh, idea, minimum deviation from wild type or healthy fluxes, but room uses a different mathematical representation rather than minimizing Euclidean distance. So it minimizes the number of changed fluxes. Since it is minimizing the number of reactions, and the number of reactions are integer numbers, right? You cannot have 2.8 number of reactions. So number of reactions will be always uh, integer. So the answer to this question, what is the minimum number of changed reactions? The answer will be always integer. So four, five reaction is the minimum number of reaction that needs to be changed. 11 reactions that needs to be changed, etc. So those are integers. So that's why we need integer programming. Linear programming was the uh, optimization where the objective function included linear terms. Quadratic programming was the optimization where the objective function included also quadratic terms. And integer programming is the optimization where the objective function value must be. And at the same time, we also want to predict the rates, right? So uh, here, the approach used is uh, mixed integer linear programming. It's not linear programming, it's not quadratic programming, but here in room, mixed integer linear programming is used uh, as the optimization method. And we can minimize, we can uh, represent the room formulation mathematically like this. Here, W represents white type flux distribution, which is known. And V represent the mutant flux distribution, which is not known, but will be predicted. And in this formulation, to make integer programming possible, a new vector of Y, again, N by one, N represents number of reactions in the uh, metabolic network, a y vector of n by 1 is introduced, and this is a binary vector. So binary means it can only take values of 0 and 1. So this binary vector is introduced in the formulation, and the objective function in room is to minimize the sum of the elements of y. Here, if the element is 1, it means that the, the reaction has changed compared to the uh, y type flux. If the yi value is 0, this means that that reaction is, has the, exactly the same flux as the y type. So, we want to minimize once the ch changed reaction number, right? So the objective function is defined as the minimization of the uh, elements, sum of the elements of y vector. I will go a little bit into the details of this mathematical formulation, but first let me show you the results from uh, the room paper that compares room predictions with MoMA and FBA predictions. And remember, I have told you that there are two ways of comparing. One is the comparison. Uh, one is the, the comparison of the correlation between the predicted and experimental intracellular fluxes. So if you have 13C, 13 carbon labeling based 
measurements of intracellular fluxes. And the other one is the comparison of predicted and experimental growth rate values. So here, they compare the correlation with the flux measurements. Black represents FBA correlation. So if they use FBA growth maximization to predict the growth rate of the, uh, sorry, to predict the flux distributions of the knocked out organism. And here they have repeated, uh, they have applied their algorithm to uh, a number of knockout organisms. So PYK1, uh, PGI, ZWF, GND. So in total, I think nine different cases. Uh, so, different knockout organisms and their 13C-based uh, experimental fluxes were used to compare MoMA and room predictions. And in this case, for example, if you use FBA, correlation is very, very low. And gray shows MoMA correlation. And as you see, room gives a higher correlation to the uh, experimental flux. And most of the cases, as you see, uh, room prediction is the best. Here again, although slightly room is uh, the best. Here too, room is the best. Here too, room is the best. Uh, here too, room is the best. Here there is no difference between the three approaches. Here again, maybe slightly room is the best or the same as uh, MoMA. Here there is no difference. So there is only one case where room performed worse than FBA and uh, MoMA. So room is not like a golden uh, standard. As you see, in some cases it can predict, uh, its prediction can be worse than uh, FBA-based, growth maximization-based approach or Euclidean distance-based MoMA approach. But still, in general, room was better, as you see here. Now let's look at the second one, comparison of the predicted and experimental growth rate values. So in this figure, in the article, they give growth rate relative error, again, for all those knockout strains. And here the smaller the better. For this one, for example, MoMA predicted growth rate very close to the measured growth rate, right? MoMA was better here. Here too, MoMA was better. It's gray bar. Here too, MoMA was better. But for the other cases you see here, MoMA prediction was very, very different from the experimental value. So that's the major problem with MoMA. Maybe it is good, it is a good approach to predict intracellular fluxes, but when you check the corresponding uh, growth rate predictions, for many cases, it gives very unrealistic growth rates as the prediction value. So that's what we observe here. The second thing, as you see, most of the cases, if BA-based predicted growth rates, the black ones, are better, right? So maybe FB is not good when it comes to predicting uh, the intracellular flux rates, but when it comes to growth prediction, again, FB looks better in many cases. And room behaves better than MoMA most of the time. In a way, both room and MoMA 
they say that there will be minimum deviation from the wild type or healthy flux distribution. So this in a way can mean that the growth of the organisms will be affected minimally from uh, this knockout. But when you look at the predicted rates, you see that MoMA predicts a very different growth rates. So growth rate predictions are not minimal. Why? Because MoMA is not interested in individual flux values, right? It minimizes the sum of the sum of squares of the difference. So this does not put any extra constraint on V1, V2, or V by MS, the growth rate. So growth rate is not treated specifically, but in the room, since room uh, codes this the formula such that the wild type based flux values are uh, unchanged if possible. Therefore, uh, room prediction uh, for the growth rate uh, is uh, better than MoMA prediction. So now I just want to share a couple of details about room formulation. So for the mutant, we already have this V1, V2, Vn rates to be predicted, right? So V shows the mutant strain flux vector. In the formulation, what is made is to extend this vector by y1, y2, yn binary vectors. So here you will have a 2n by 1 vector because each of those will be n by 1. And here each y1 represents if v1 is changed or not with respect to the y type value. So if v1 is the same as w1, the y type flux, then y1 will be 0. If y2 is not the same as v w1, w2, sorry, then y2 will be 1. So each of those correspond to nth one will correspond to the nth one here. Normally we have this s dot v equals zero, right? And we have values, so this is m by n. And each column correspond to a reaction here. So these are the V corresponding to V. Then we extend our vector by also including Y, the binary vector. Since S dot V is equal to zero, now we have V prime, let's say, this is 2n by 1, right? In order to hold this equation, we should also change the dimension of s to m by 2n, because those dimensions must be equal to each other in order to multiply the uh, equations. So just to uh, fix this dimensionality issue, we need to add an 
another M by N matrix block here. So the dimension of the original, the, the dimension of the final vector will be M by 2N, as you see here. So, and how? You will just put zeros here. Because this is just to adjust the dimensionality. So it won't affect your mass balances. This one will again represent V1 plus V2 plus V3 equals zero, right? Because these are all zeros. So it won't change your mass balances. Just it will let you include Y also as uh, the variables in your formulation. So you will have this S prime times V prime equals zero. This is now the combination of V and Y. So the dimensions is here 2 and by 1 for this. And here the dimension is 2 and by M. And here the dimension, sorry, this is M by 2 N. Here the dimension is again M by 1 because the number of rows were not changed. I will shortly now talk about those constraints here. So y can take 2, 0, or 1. It's a binary vector. These two equations may look complicated to you at first sight, but now you will see that they are actually very logical vectors. So let's consider the case where y is 0. So which means the mutant flux has not changed. It is the same as the wild type flux, right? So in this case, this equation will turn to, because y's are zero, it will turn to v w v w. So we are talking about a specific reaction here, so let me put the indices i here. So for this i flux, this means that actually you fix v to the wild type flux because it doesn't it it doesn't change, right? So you say that mutant flux must be smaller than the corresponding uh, smaller and equal than the corresponding wild type flux, and it should be greater than equal greater than or equal to the wild type flux. This is like fixing the flux to its wild type value, right? Because you say that the flux will not change. Let's look at the other alternative. So the other alternative is y is 1. In this case, v minus v max plus w smaller than w. And these w's will cancel. So this is V, V max. Here V max is actually the upper bound vector. So you say that if the flux is changing, which is Y equals one, then you just use the upper bound value as the constraint, as the upper constraint. And here, again, if Y is one, V minus V min, plus W will be greater than W. And here, again, Ws will cancel. So this means V will be greater than Vw mean. And here Vw mean represents the lower bound vector. So for the changed fluxes, you say that those fluxes has to be uh, smaller than upper bound weight value, so smaller than Sorry, thousand. That's what we usually use, right? So, 
and lower bound should be uh, higher than zero or minus thousand based on the reversibility. So in the case of y equals zero, this equation fixes the corresponding rate to the wild type flux. In the case of y equals one, it uses the reaction reversibility information to constrain the corresponding flux. So it's a very nice way of implementing those two information in a single uh, equation. 